Welcome back to another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And we are talking all about the lymphatic system, what it is, how to get to know it and understand it in your body, and what you can do to help improve it and really clear those toxins. With the lymphatic system, simply put, it's kind of our garbage system, and it runs along all of our veins and our arteries or our blood vessels in our body and what it does is it kind of leaches out these toxins throughout and down very at the ends of our fingers and our toes where our blood vessels are the smallest that's where we kind of leach out a lot of these toxins before or as it's coming back towards our heart in the venous system the difficulty with the lymphatic system is it's kind of a passive system or it's known as what we call more of a passive system so it doesn't have a lot of active pumping so sometimes we can get fluid build up as we're trying to bring all those toxins back to the heart or to the liver or wherever we're going to kind of recycle or clear out some of those toxins and then do that cycle all over again so if we kind of just imagine this lymphatic system as the garbage system sucking out toxins kind of out of the blood vessels as they are coming back towards the heart to cycle through throughout the whole lymphatic system just like our vessels as we get closer to the heart, the lymphatic nodules or places that kind of all these fluids are collected through where they're kind of screened for toxins get bigger. So just like the vessels, we kind of have the smaller tubules in these in this lymphatic system, way down at our fingers and our toes and our hands and feet, drawing out that initial fluid and dumping it into bigger, bigger systems and flowing it through these lymphatic nodules or these lymphatic nodes, lymph nodes, as it comes back towards the heart. And that's where we kind of screen for toxins to say like, hey, do we need to have any inflammatory processes or any T cells, which is our immune system, come here to fight any of these toxins? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the way that we get toxins out of the blood and then screen it to see if our body needs to do anything to protect our system from getting sick. Well, when we get fluids pumping better, not only are you going to help to clear toxins from your body, which who doesn't want that, right? You don't have to do a juice cleanse to do that. You can just start these different techniques and tools that we're going to tell you about. But when we get fluids moving better within the lymphatic system as well, that's going to help, you know, between our fascia. So our fascia is that whole interweaving connected tissue and between each layer of sort of your fascia, you have fluids. And if we can get our fluids to move better, we're going to get our fascia to slide and glide better. So again, this is why it's so important to systemically look at the body as a whole and not just what is my movement practice, but how are even my fluids moving so that my movement practice, my mobility, all of that can help to improve. So let's go into number one, which is our favorite. And we're going to like jam you over the head with it (laughs) over and over again, which is the breath and you know even just talking with someone (laughs) when we were at a party yesterday oh my breath is great yes we're all breathing (laughs) right we're all doing breath you're here you're listening you are great you're breathing but how can we maximize our breath to really make sure that we're staying in this more parasympathetic state and not just in this heightened state of fight flight freeze where if we're fight flight freeze everything gets really tense and fluids are not going to flow as well in that state so even your breath dictates that neurological system of tension and of stagnant fluid so it is so important to really start to assess that and we talk about all of this in the breath episode that we did episode 11 um so if you need to go back and actually really start diving into that breath stuff breath's great nervous system wise and it's also great just for the placement of all those major lymphatic nodes that we mentioned being right underneath you know near that pelvic floor in the pelvis right underneath the diaphragm near the rib cage up in the chest you know where our rib cage is going to be expanding and contracting so if we're breathing well we're again kind of pumping that abdomen and that chest thoracic cavity and in turn pumping those nodules a little bit mm-hmm. and that's where it's you know centralized so if we clear that out we're already starting to clear space for more fluid to come from the arms and the legs so the next one is we're talking about fluids here So we need to make sure we're drinking fluids and make sure we're drinking good fluids. So we're taking in water specifically every day and everyone has that eight cup mark in mind, like, oh, drink eight cups of water a day. Slightly different for everybody based on where your body's at and how you process fluids, but water. 
Water. Drink more water. And I and that's something that like was cued to me a long time ago. When you think you're hungry, have you drinking water? And another great way, so this brings us to point number three, is adding in better foods and good nutrition into our health, which if we're getting in a lot of fruits and veggies, we actually help to get more fluid and water even pulled from those fruits and veggies. So adding in more nutrient dense food. So we know, and we've the, you know, veggies and fruits, they've been studied. Okay. If we are eating more of these, then we're decreasing that amount of inflammation within our body. We're improving our fluid intake even by having those within our diet. We're going to add in things that are very nutrient dense, that are whole food based, things that you look at and you recognize what the food is, because if we're doing that, we're probably eliminating some processed stuff. Mm -hmm. And anytime sugars, processed things go in our body that our body doesn't break down as well, there's some component of inflammation happening. There's some component of us maybe retaining more fluids because of all the extra particles and you know sugar that's floating around the body. So making sure that we're adding in those good foods, then we're getting a lot more phytochemicals, then we're getting a lot more nutrients from those foods, vitamins that are gonna help reduce that inflammation. So it's almost a double whammy to add in some good foods or some nutrient dense foods nutrient dense nutrient foods, dense foods. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it yeah. <laughs> then the next one which if you've done any one of my challenges you'll probably see it it's bouncing and this is where you go back to stimulating that fascial tissue and getting things to relax so you can actually start to activate the muscles you want to improve the mobility that you want to release the tension in that tissue bouncing it's that first line of support to kind of help to move those fluids around and this means like it doesn't have to mean like you're jumping it just means you're on your toes and you're bouncing on your heels and you're literally letting your body just relax so a lot of people don't like to do this too especially in crowds or groups of people because things are going to jiggle let them jiggle let them loose um i don't think we spend enough time like actually allowing our body to just shake out and when we do that we can really help to release that restriction and get those fluids pumping next point is neural lymphatic points yes right and so this is i mean big word but all it means is the lymphatic system that we're talking about and the nervous system that jen and i talk about so much there's points where those kind of cross, mm-hmm. right? And if we've taught anything in all of the PT pearls we've done, we need to talk to the nervous system, right? And so where the lymphatic system and nervous system are crossing, if we try talking right to those points, then we might stimulate some activity in that lymphatic system a little bit more. Yeah. And this was really like, shout out to IKN, Integrated Kinetic Neurology. Yes. Um, my friends there, I took one of their courses and they really helped to kind of highlight this and show how it can be so effective um, in getting your body to relax, getting that tension, getting the fluids moving. And so this means that we're not going to be like really pushing in. We're not breaking up scar tissue. We're just talking as Dom said. So this is if we find our belly button and our hip bone and then we go and we kind of make a diagonal line between the two and this is where like so just finding these points and and it feels like almost like a hip flexor release so don't dig too hard it's better to like lay down so that because right now my core is supporting me to sit up strong so Mm -hmm. i can't really like get into anything as much but if you can lay down and relax and kind of just dig your fingers just nice and gently so it's not again a dig it's like okay i feel the pressure now i'm going to do my breath work that we talked about and breathe and relax into it it's just 30 seconds next area right on top of the sternum and you kind of get your knuckles and you just are going to start to wiggle your knuckles and kind of almost scraping (laughs) that um, sternum area and you find the places that feel a little bit more like oh I feel that you know Mm -hmm. again not trying to like create pain or anything you're just feeling it and you're breathing into it okay um another area so yeah we can go underneath the rib cage underneath Mm -hmm. the rib cage is a really good area so getting those fingers i love this one you should be able to get your fingers up and under the rib cage and we've talked about this before as well so important so this is one again relax breathe 30 seconds in each area last one i like to talk about is right underneath the clavicle or the collarbones and again just getting your fingers trying to kind of go up and under those collarbones and you'll notice oh there's a lot of tension there like oh i feel tight and yeah you might be tight in your pec area but it also is like an area of where that nervous 
that those nerves and the lymphatic tissue kind of cross. And so that's why you feel a little bit more tension. Um, but again, spending time in there, 30 seconds in each place, breathing, it can help to start to move things along. Another one is dry brushing. And mm -hmm. I've shown a video on this both on Instagram and on uh, YouTube. So we'll link it up. Um, so you can look at that in a little bit more detail. Um, so in general, it's really light brushing. The type of brush you can get, whatever is on Amazon. It's just dry bristles and it's just like light to moderate pressure along the leg. And again, where did we talk about how the lymphatic system pulls? It's from the feet all the way up to the heart. So every motion that we're doing, so we go from the leg, usually right and then left, right arm to left arm, and we're always going toward the heart. So it's just brushing up toward the heart. Stomach, some people go in like a circular direction um, as far as their digestive system. So up and down, so up the right, down the left, and you can go that way, or you could go up toward the heart again, um, around the chest, or like kind of making circular motion. Mm -hmm. in the armpits is nice um, again there's a lot of the nodules there up the back up the bum even <laughs> down the chest down the neck toward the heart so everything toward the heart and then Dom likes to do like the backing out yeah just the whole hey we got to back whatever's closest to the end of the driveway first so I like to start around my chest and around my heart and around my armpits and around my hips right so doing all that stuff around my chest and my abdomen and my hips first so moving that toward yep, the heart moving first. that towards the heart first and then i'll go into one of my legs and do my thigh up towards the heart and then do my lower leg and thigh up towards the heart and then do foot all the way up and then go to the next leg same thing thigh to the lower leg to the foot then the arm upper arm lower arm to the hand the other arm and then you can really just go all over everything once again Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to, I don't know, make sure that you're not trying to push fluids that are in your feet before you've cleared out stuff that might be in your legs or in your abdomen. And I think that's a great way to really focus on it, do it. And even if you just were to take your hand and kind of cup your, your uh, thumb and your pointer finger and just kind of <laughs> move it up toward the heart, even on the arm, on the leg, like you can again it's not a specific thing it's just light to moderate pressure and it's up toward the heart undoubtedly when i'm doing dry brushing everyone loves to hate on dry brushing but undoubtedly whenever i'm doing it i feel better and i, I feel too. clearer and i feel like my joints aren't as puffy yes. i don't wake up in the morning feel like i haven't cleared all the crap out of my hands and feet especially and so when like, i do it on my face too yeah. oh it feels so good there's like a little brush that you can use on your face or you can use the gua sha it's the same thing so a lot of people love to say oh where's the research what it's just like hey i feel good when i do it so i'm gonna keep doing it and then the last one point number seven move move your body if you move your body you're going to move your fluids exactly movement daily and this doesn't have to mean like a big hard workout but you're going to get up and you're going to walk daily you're going to move your body you're going to take the stairs more than the elevator you're just going to move when we move we help to pump things we move fluids we get yeah. things rocking and rolling in our body and you feel so much better yeah, both our veins and our lymphatic system that pull things back towards our heart are more what we call passive systems. I think I mentioned at the beginning, so we need a little bit of this pumping of the muscles around it to help get that lymphatic and venous fluid out of our legs mostly because mm -hmm. we're having our legs down in this dependent position all day. Mm -hmm. So if we're sitting all day and we're not pumping those muscles, we're just asking for the fluid to build up in our feet, mm -hmm. right? So if you sit at a desk for long periods of work every half hour every hour make sure you get up walk around your building once walk around your office once for a couple minutes lay on the floor and get those feet up in the air and just pump your ankles around for a minute right that little bit of movement if done throughout the day at intervals could prevent you from feeling like you have swollen ankles and feet oh, at the end totally. of the day thanks for joining us for another pt pearl from the optimal body podcast talking about your lymphatic system hopefully you have a little bit better idea how to get those fluids moving if you loved it comment below let us know what you loved if you have other things you want to learn also let us know and tune in next time for your next pt pearl